Okay, so the next thing in Webflow that we are going to learn is how to use the CMS. So our CMS is short for Content Management System. And so it's basically just a database of information that's stored kind of behind the scenes that will kind of auto fill that, that content that you're putting in the database. Um, you can auto fill it in somewhere using HTML. That sounds a lot more confusing than it actually is. So I'm going to just show you really quickly how we can start building out our CMS. So the first thing you're going to do is open the CMS tab. So you'll see it looks like three different disks stacked on top of each other. That's kind of a general symbol for database. So we're going to open that. Um, yours will probably be empty. So all you have to do is click this create new collection button at the top. And then it's going to show you this full screen of stuff that looks a little bit confusing at first. So what we're going to do here is basically just create a collection. And in the case of both clients for your assignment, whether it's um, it's basically either for each client, it's going to be a listing item. So if you think about our listings for our Glamp ground, if we look here, we have all of this information um, on all three listings, and they're all kind of the same information. They're going to all be unique depending on, you know, if it's listing one, listing two, listing three, but they're all going to have a section for price, for name, for type, description, and so on. So rather than us having to create a listing and, you know, design it, the, like design the whole thing and then duplicate it two more times and then, you know, copy paste listing two's description and, you know, all that. If down the road I have, say, like 300 listings and I want to make an edit to one of these pages or I want to maybe add something additional, if I, you know, maybe in five years we have a new kind of, I don't know, a, a topic that has to do with the technology of your home or something like that. I'm not going to want to have to go through into 300 different listings and update each of those listings for, you know, what kind of technology is running the home <laughs> or whatever. So this is why we're going to use our CMS. So it's going to be an easy way to just store our content and then it's going to kind of auto put this content where we tell it to go using HTML. So Let's go back to our new collection. So I'm going to call this my uh, glamping listings. Okay. So all it's going to ask for at the very beginning. So I can start by using a template and they do have a listings tab here that we could use. Um, but let's just not use it just for now, just to show you kind of how it's going through um, um, kind of by building it by hand. So we have to give it a collection name. So that's basically just what it's going to show here in this uh, left hand column. Um, the collection URL. So that's really you can see it here. Um, it's it's really just giving it this this slug here. OK. Um, now down here we have our collection fields. And so this is where we're going to start adding in um, price, name, type, description, etc. So let's just start with price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a field. So it, by default, any collection, you have to name it and you have to give it a slug, meaning um, so if my listing one, I might call it listing one or I might actually, you know, name it something a little bit better. Um, it's going to be, you know, webflow.com slash glamping listings because that's what my collection is called and then it's going to be the individual item associated to the collection okay so the glamping listings is the overall collection and then right here where it says example that's going to be the actual individual item within the collection okay now we obviously need more than just a name and a slug we need custom fields. So we have all of these different kinds of fields that we can add in. And fields will be like, like I said, name, price, type, 
um, maybe details. Um, if you want, you can break it down into uh, like facilities can be one. Um, it's up to you kind of how you break these down. So let's just start with price. So I know that my price is going to be something like $460 a night. So what I can do is I can either make this plain text or maybe I'd want this to be a number. Um, it's up to you. In this case, I might do a number just so I can show you um, something um, once we build, start building the, the pages. So I'm going to label this as price. So you can see in the right hand column, it's actually giving me a preview of what my what the form is going to kind of look like. So once we fill this out, this is the form that we're going to fill in. And that's where your database is being created. Okay, so you're going to have um, the same form created for each individual listing. So, you know, for listing one, we're going to have to give the price. For listing two, we're going to have to give the price, etc. So price, you can put some help text here and if you want. Um, so here, example, that's what it will look like. So this is really only helpful if um, your label maybe doesn't really make sense. And down the road, if you or your client, like if you want to kind of just give them some help text, you can put it in there. You can give a minimum max number. We don't need that. Um, we're just going to do any format. Um, you can allow negative numbers or any should be required. Um, I'm going to just check that off. Again, this is just for using the editor mode of Webflow, which we will be getting into, um, I think, next week. So that's really if you were building this for a client, the client can go rather than going into the designer view that we have been designing in, they actually have their own front end that's called the editor mode, where they can actually just create all of their own listings very quickly just on their own without being in the back end here. So okay, now I have my price, I'm going to save my field. Now my next one is name. So I'm going to add another field. This might be, this is probably just plain text. Okay, it's just going to be a name. So I'll just call it name of actually, you know what, I don't even need name because it already starts with name at the top. So again, it's up to you. Um, so if you don't add it, then your name here will have to be this. So this is also going to be your slug. So it would be, um, you know, website.com slash glamping listing slash and then it would be unique and secluded dome retreat surrounded by mountains. You can shorten that if you want, but I don't think it really matters in this case. So now we have type. So let's call it type because I decided I'm not going to do name because I already have it here. So actually cancel. I'm going to discard. So type, I think we have like dome, caravan. Um, so in that case, um, let me see, what else can we do? Again, this could be plain text. Um, you can go through all of these and kind of decide which one you want to use. Um, don't worry about the reference and multi-reference. Um, this is really, these are a little bit more complicated. This is if you have a blog and you have, say you have, I don't know, five writers for your blog. If you want to have a page that just lists out all of your authors, that's kind of referencing to your blog collection. So it's like a mini collection within a collection. So you, you're not going to have to worry about these two at least. Um, the other ones you can add whatever you want. Um, in this case, let's just do type. Okay, so kind of. Um, kind of, uh, let's just call it resort. I forget what the word is right now. <laughs> okay, so it's a kind of resort. So that's what I mean by type. Uh, you can make it required or not. I won't for that. Okay, and now I'll just do description. Now I have a lot of text in this description. So I could if I wanted make this plain text, or I can use something called rich text. 
Um, rich text actually will allow you to um, add images. You can bold certain things. You can put lists in there. Um, it's basically plain text, but you can do a lot more making it, uh, you know, quote unquote rich. So let's just do rich text and I'll just description. Oh my God. All right, description. This is going to be required and I'm going to save. So keep going through all of these items. So I'll leave these up to you depending on how you want to break this down. If you want each of these, uh, you might be able to do each of these on their own. Um, just note that we do only have 30 fields. Um, that is quite a lot, but um, if you start doing these one by one, you might kind of run out of line items. I think we need to bump up our, um, our Webflow hosting uh, plan in order to get more fields. So uh, 30 is just kind of what we have to work with. Okay, so you can have as many as you want. So let's just start with those. And then I'm just going to create my collection. Uh, format must be giving. Oh. Huh? Okay, apparently I have to give a format integer for my for my price. Okay, so I'm going to save and then create. So after I've created, it's just going to look like this. And one of the cool things that Webflow does is that it allows you to create dummy text. Um, so, you know, if you're waiting for a client to give you a bunch of blog posts, but you don't want to have to wait for them to give you the post to start designing, you can just add dummy items in here. Um, and you know what, I'm going to actually do that right now, just because I don't want to have to write through all of these individually. So you can see it's just kind of lorem ipsum. It has generated five different dummy tags for me um, or listings, I guess. So here I have my name which I can come here, I will copy, okay, and I'm gonna put it in there as well. Um, price 460, um, in this case, don't worry right now about where it says the dollar sign and then slash night, because I'll show you what we can do there. Okay, so type, I'll just write dome, and then here I'll leave it kind of as is. But you can see if I do a paragraph, if I hit enter, I have this little plus symbol where I can add images, I can add a video, I can add code, I can add any multimedia like a map. Um, I can add lists, uh, unordered and ordered lists. So again, this gives you just a lot of um, a lot of different variety. You can highlight and make certain things in H1, in H2, you know, uh, block quote, you can italicize and bold things, you can make things links, all that kind of stuff. So once you're done with that, you can click save. So now this one has been uh, edited. And these just say stage for publish, meaning, you know, you can work on blog posts and things like that. And they're not going to go live until you actually publish them. So right now they're staged for publish, meaning they're basically not published, but they're they're pretty much ready to be published. So that's all you have to do. So you should really only have your three listings with all of your information, depending on how you want to break it down. It's up to you. And then what we're going to do <clears throat> is once we did that, if you open up your pages panel, you'll actually see under CMS collection pages, you'll see that we have um, it's like a little purple page icon, and then, and then it says glamping listings template. So I can click on there, and there's nothing. And they do that on purpose. So now this is our template page for our details, um, our listings detail page. Okay, so this is going to be all the details that we need. So I'm on this page. So you'll notice it's not even in here. It's, it's on its own. Now, if I want to add... Say I'm going to add a hero banner at the top. Uh, I don't know. I'll just put some columns. I'll put a heading in here. Okay. So when I start feeding in 
elements that involve um, anything that can be changed, like text or photos or anything like that, it's going to give me this little purple box here where you can check it. And it's basically asking, like, do you want to grab this text? So this heading that you just put in, do you want to link that to some kind of database that you've put inside of the CMS? So in this case, we do. I want this to be the name of the glamp ground. So if I open this field, it's going to basically, oh, sh OK, sorry. I paused my recording, and somebody came to the door. So where was I? OK, so basically, this purple thing here, it's it knows that this is text. And so it's going to ask you, what text do you want to grab from the database? So in this case, the text that I have is name, price, type, and then these three at the bottom were kind of automatically in there. So the date that it was created on, published on, updated on, um, you might want that in your page. This is kind of more for blogs. So you know when you know when your blog was published, when it's updated, etc. So in this case, I'm just going to click name. Okay. So. I can see that this is now updated with my name. Now, if I click up here, so it says here that I'm on my glamping listings page, my uh, template page, and then I'm specifically on this item. Now, if I want to go through and check that they're all up to date, I can do so. So now you can see that all five of these items that I've put text in, it knows that this H1 that I have put right up here is going to take the, the name from every um, item within my CMS. Okay, so another example, if I want to put my, um, let's see, my price, I'll put my price underneath if I can. What is happening here? Okay, so I'm going to add some text underneath, and I want this to be my price. So again, I'm going to get my text from my listings, and I'm going to click price. Okay, so in this case, I actually want it to say a dollar amount. So I could have made this rather than a number, I could have made this into just text, and I could have written, you know, uh, a dollar symbol, 400 or $3,600 per night. Um, or what I can do is from here, I can actually still style everything. So maybe I want my price to be um, larger, maybe make it 18 and maybe I'll just make it um, red just to stand out. Okay, so again, class systems work the same here. So maybe I'll be naming this like price number or something like that. Let's make this big. So now this is probably a bad example, but this is just to show you what you can do as well. If I'm going to add, I'm going to duplicate. So I copy pasted here. I want this to be my number symbol. So I'm going to basically uncheck this get text from. Okay, so now this text is just a very simple blank text. It's not associated to anything within my database. And I'm just going to do, so, you know, do my symbol of a dollar amount. And then I'm going to also go here slash per month. Okay, this is really ugly. But this I know is going to change or sorry, it's going to stay the same for every single um, listing. So again, if I click through, you'll see that I have my dollar sign, I have my price number, which you'll see is associated to the listings in, within the CMS. So that number is changing, but the dollar symbol and the slash month is staying the same. So again, if I want to drag and drop, here's an example. If I want to put a picture, I don't have any fields that I've connected to pictures right now. I haven't uploaded any pictures in my CMS, I mean. 
So if I just choose an image and I put it in there and then I go to my other ones, that exact same image is going to be on every single page because that's what it thinks I want it to do. But if I want this, this image to be um, related to this individual listing, then what I have to do is I have to go back into my glamping uh, collection. I'll click on this little gear icon and then I want to add a field. And here I can add multi-image. So um, if I want to add a gallery or a slide a slider or something like that, in this case, I'm I just want to add an image and um, maybe call it house main image or, you know, hero banner house image, something like that. And then here is where, whoops, I'm going to save and then I'm going to save my collection. So now I can go back in and I'm going to pop a picture in. Okay, wait for that to upload and now I'll save. Do the same thing here. Okay, save. Now when I go back, I'm going to tell this now to get my image from this house main image. And now you might be like, what the hell is happening? But this specific listing, I didn't add any images within the CMS. So basically it's saying there's nothing in the database for me to find. And then the other ones that I did add a picture to, I think would be this one. So this picture is from the CMS, etc. So you kind of have to break down these pages into what content is going to be changing from each individual um, listing and what elements are going to be the same. So if I decide that I want maybe a, I just want like a random blue line here or something for some reason. And I know I want that on every single one. I'm just going to put it in and it's not related to anything in the CMS. So it's basically just duplicating itself. If I want this to be a different color, um, I can actually do that, I believe. If I click, yeah, so again, if you click on the gear icon up here in the top right hand corner, there are other dynamic style settings. So if I want each of my three listings, to, all three have this line underneath, but I actually want them to all be a different color. Again, I can go back into my CMS and I can add a field for color. And let's just call this color. I'll save it and then save my collection. So if I go into here, I can choose my color. Maybe I want this one to be blue. Um, I want this one. That's another one with an image. I want this one to be red. Actually, I'll just do it here too. And I want this one to be this green. Okay, so now when I go back, I can tell this div block, I can tell it to get the background color from my color field. Okay, so now if I go through, these will all be different based off of what I've given it within the CMS. If I didn't give it a specific code, it's going to just kind of go to the default, which here I've made it blue. Okay, so if the only ones that are changing are the ones that I specifically told to change within the CMS. Okay, so again, keep in mind things that you want to repeat throughout all three listings and anything that's specific to an individual listing will be inside of your CMS. Um, start small, start kind of how I'm doing it. Just start thinking about, you know, go back to your, your wireframes and see how you're laying this out and start labeling your items. So here I might, you know, look and be like, okay, I know I need my name. I want my name up here. I want my price item. I want, um, you know, my pictures and things like that. Um, rather than another thing too that you can do with this is maybe I can write, description and this is going to be my header and then I can put you know my paragraph or uh, my rich text which I will show you what that means 
I'm going to get my text from description. Oops. Okay. So again, this, because I haven't told it to link to anything in the CMS or the database, this is going to be the exact same on each page. Okay. So that'll be really good for titles. Um, anything, if you want, you know, a button at the bottom, you know, uh, I don't know, a form, something like that, you can do it within that. Um, your titles, anything again, that's going to kind of be the same thing throughout. You can just kind of put it in there and don't connect it to anything. Um, you know, don't go into your CMS and make an item that's called title one, title two, title three, or whatever, if they're going to all be the same. That's just too much extra work. So here in this is all um, rich text. That's something else that we can style in our style guide, which for some reason I'm just realizing they didn't add in your style guide. So if you want to just drag and drop your rich text, you can edit what your rich text will look like here. Uh, oh, I guess not. No. So this actually is just a kind of a grouping of individual elements. I apologize. So, you know, it's taking your H2, which I have here, my paragraph, which is taking from here, my H4, okay, and so on. So ignore that. Okay, so that is how you do a CMS. Um, I'm, I'm, I apologize, this is a long video, and I'm going to make one more to show you how to do a CMS. Uh, what's it called? So this is a collection page, what we just did. We also have something here called a collection list, which I will go over in the next video.